All right, welcome to another episode of the Critical Introvert Show. I'm your host, uh, Senor Filth. We have uh, Benevolent Asshole, Luke Rawlings, and Axiom Paradox. And today we're going to kind of have a kind of a fun subject. We're just going to sort of talk about uh, like our path or origins to how we sort of came to be the kind of people that we are, as far as like how we think and what we believe in. Um, I guess we could just kind of, I'll just throw it out there. I mean, who wants to just start with, as far as like anything that comes to mind, it's like what started like your path to whatever this is. Uh, Luke, Benevolent? Uh, my, the first thing that got me drawing, I don't know what, what got you guys just in the art. Uh, when I first started drawing, I was, I don't know how old I was. We went to Disney World. And we got to walk through where they were doing the animating. It turned out later that they were making, got to watch, so that I cannot talk, that they were making Beauty and the Beast. And, oh, cool. uh, but that was just so cool to me going through there as a little kid, you know, seeing them drawing all the stuff. And then as, that was basically the start of it and been drawn ever since. What about you guys? What did y'all, what, what uh, got you guess- started into drawing? I guess for me, just in general, just in art, um, I was just a kid and I just really had a, I just really loved cartoons um, and from Disney, but mostly for me, uh, I was a big fan of like Tom and Jerry and like Tex Avery cartoons because they were just so wacky. But even then, yeah. I kind of had an idea that like, it's funny for me as a kid, but like there's some like even adult ish things within this humor uh it sort of like made me even like it even more that there was something about it that made me think like i could even probably like this as an adult in the future and that just kind of started for me like that's when i started just recreating like you know whatever cartoon characters i i saw like and that's sort of what started for me Yeah, like the 80s and 90s had the best cartoons, and that's why like everybody used to wake up like at six in the morning just to like watch uh, <laughs> G.I. Joe or like, He-Man and eat your cereal and like... <laughs> yeah, back whenever the, it was, you had limited the options, they, yeah. you, it, you had higher quality. Now yeah. it's just like so much garbage is out there. Some of it, so much of it is politically driven that you don't get real storytelling anymore. Yeah, there's no character arcs anymore. It's just like the character, like it doesn't make any sense how this person all, all of a sudden is like LGBT community sort of like oriented. I'm like, how did it, uh, the Smurfs become gay? Or like, how did it, I was like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, like, like I said in the, on the last episode, it, like every character has the potential to become anything. But as a storyteller, you have to have, like, demonstrate or show some kind of character art. If a character is a certain way, and you want to, like, even if you want to, like, impose that narrative, you have to show, you have to tell a story. How did he get from A to B? And yeah. we're, not see- we're not seeing that anymore. We're just seeing, okay, this guy is a, this guy is gay, this guy is so-and-so, and this guy, or it's just, like, they're, they're pushing that sort of, like, narrative that even every th- character. Even Thundercat started from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they I eventually guess. became the the uh, cat crime fighters that they later were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the, you don't you don't see that uh, journey. Uh, what's it called? Uh, the call of to, hero's uh, journey. Call to adventure. The oh, hero's yeah. Journey, yeah. The, the hero's journey, and you don't see that anymore. It's just more like okay, let's impose our narrative on you. Uh, he's gonna be gay, yeah. or yeah. he's gonna be. Uh, um, SJW, or he's going to be like, against I Trump. Like, I don't mind that stuff being in a show or whatever, you know, adult themed anyway. But I don't want it to feel like it has to be part of the story. Like, yeah. there's so much stuff that they put on there just to put it in there. Yeah, and it, it, then it, it, it just takes away it, from the overall experience. I, I think, yeah. though, a lot of the time, because I'm just going by when I was in college, like I would have an idea for a project. And like, it it felt like either another student or the teacher just wanted me to like throw in something that was kind of douchey and like preachy. And I just kind of threw it in there, like kind of like, okay, this character's gay. I I think that's sort (laughs) of 
they when I, really when I did see this a uh, couple of times uh, that's crazy like i I, uh, I took a class a painting class and uh, i just wanted to because i love uh, garbage pill kids i don't know if you guys know what that is yeah, yeah i remember that yeah. and i wanted to i had this idea of like doing my own kind of series and i brought it to the teacher and she's like oh this is fun but like you know there's things going on and you know i mean you know you really want to do something more you know, out like more uh, what would be the word more progressive, progressive. or something yeah. like Liberating. that Liberating. and I, I was just like oh okay and then I, I think i just dropped the class or something like a day later but That's yeah I, I think that like all this preachiness and in, in like story to i why it's done so terribly is I think part of a lot of it has to do with just like the artists themselves and people creating it like they want to like have fun and then they're just being like kind of like coached by from the back and like mm -hmm. just add this <laughs> yeah they're like all is, right fuck it. they make you compromise your work to push yeah. their agenda it's and then there's a some of them though anymore they don't even it's just like they barely come up with something to wrap around their just for an excuse to do it Mm -hmm. like, it's so thinly veiled that it, it's obvious propaganda. I can't stand it. Yeah, but, but also like the messaging is so it, it's a lot more, I guess, direct and obvious. Mm -hmm. Like if you think of like I don't know, like something like Pinocchio, like the the uh, part when they when they go into the like whatever when they turn into donkeys and stuff like that. There was a general nice. theme of like you know don't be a fucking little dick when you're a kid or you're going to be a jackass like it was small and <laughs> yeah. subtle but yeah it wasn't like beat your head beat you over the head with it but now it just feels like it's a little too preachy it feels like in like an overprotective parent like making this mm -hmm. cartoon and, and it's not fun and you know it always cracks me up though is like sometimes you can tell whenever uh, i think they do it on purpose too the people making the movie or show or whatever you remember whenever they would do ad placements on like USA or something and it was like yeah. for a car and yeah. the conversation would be like so off topic like yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah. features it, it's almost what it's turned into like just yeah to, it has like a product placement feel to it like yeah instead of like yeah. someone just pulling out a Pepsi or something it's just like oh my god my son is trans or something like that yeah. it has the same kind of weird feeling and it's just uncomfortable to watch forced um, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like did you guys see that um that thing about a, a nickelodeon i think they did like some mm -hmm. pride yeah, thing they lost a whole bunch of <laughs> yeah like 60 percent of viewers or some shit yeah it's and, bad oh cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it was a. Uh, it was i couldn't believe that uh video it was an that odd they move <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. well it's because they hijacked the rainbow like they just made everything that's so innocent like into something perverse and uh we need to take it back somehow like yeah <laughs> yeah it's you know like how how the hell would like culturally people like take it down or not it's like i i think for me when i think about like the whole gay push i think it's i, I guess the best way it feels like they're going too hard, too fast with it. <laughs> I guess, you know what I mean? That's what he said. I don't mean like the verse, but you know, you know what I mean? Like Make it an yeah. accurate representation of what's in the world. That's yeah. what I think. Right. You know, so like no for for me, like I I honestly like I don't care what anybody does in the privacy of their own life or their own home, you know, like mm -hmm. that's that's on them. It's it's the fact that they're pushing it onto everybody so heavy. Like it's yeah. one thing to include that content and things like, um, yeah, you're probably, you know, in a large group of people in a TV show or, or whatever, you know, you're probably going to have somebody who's gay in there. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably not going to have 15 trans people in one TV show <laughs> <laughs> unless they're actually living in a community, you know, like it's, yeah, yeah. it's a much smaller percentage of the population that it, it actually yeah. affects uh, yeah. legitimately. And it's just such a, they're, it, they're saying they're, doing all of this because they want people to be like inclusive and mm -hmm. and but it's it's much more than that because 
it's much more of a put off if they're forcing the content on you all the time rather than you you accepting people for who they are yeah you're being told you need to be a certain way and it's <clears throat> it's a very uncomfortable sort of thing so i've always been very like and i mean part of that is probably because i i haven't always been conservative mm -hmm. um but i just it just seems strange to me how much they're doing and it's just like yeah. what what is their ulterior motive like what is their end game with what they're doing but i i question everything now mm -hmm. like this doesn't feel <laughs> right this there's something wrong with this like what are what is your actual end goal here yeah, and two like i get the idea that with this <clears throat> like they expect people to either love it or if they don't they need to change and they have to love it like mm -hmm. like before like i don't think any of us have any issue with homosexuality like i never gave a fuck really i think that's yeah that's that's you can ask most for, like, people are so, just shit. so you're okay yeah. with kissing a guy then i mean of course yeah <laughs> see that's 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 what, the, what they're trying to do they're trying like okay well if you're not homophobic like how come you don't kiss a guy? Like, yeah, it's like, right. I mean, pushy like that. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It's just like, yeah. so, it's, it's so all you designed. yourself don't want to be with a guy, so now you're you're homophobic. It's like, no, yeah. I, that's just not my, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I remember like, uh, even like a few years ago, I'm trying to remember what year, like maybe like in 2013, when I used to work at, you know, um, in CityWalk. Mm -hmm. And there was like this vendor like across from us. And I never knew he was he was gay. But um, I would talk to him all the time because he was cool. And then, like, this, this one girl, like, was like, David, like, uh, you, you shouldn't talk to that guy. Like, he's gay. I'm like, him? No, that guy's cool. He's got to go tea. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, it, yeah, it turned out, like, he, he is gay because uh, the places he was asking me, like, he, he's asking me if I went to, like, certain, like, gay clubs. But I didn't know they were gay at the time because um, I don't go to those places. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like, one, one time... Uh, in city walk in um because there's like a actually a lot <laughs> there's like another guy that he asked me if i would ever date like a trans uh, transvestite i'm like well i'm not gay why would i go out with like a transvestite and then he's like well what do you wh who do you think uh transvestites go out with do you think they go out with, with girls or i'm like <laughs> I was like, what are you talking? I'm like, hey. he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I tell you, I'm like, <laughs> if somebody yeah. goes out with a transvestite, you're not, and you're a guy, you're not straight anymore. You're, I don't, yeah. I don't care. But it's like they, they're, they're like, they're, they're trying so hard just to have like the, to try to push their little lifestyle onto you, and then well, even, it, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just to say, it's like what you're saying is making me think about how everything is designed as like a, a guilt trap or something mm -hmm. where anything or a shame trap like anything you do exactly that if they, if you have a point to make that doesn't line up with it then and, and it's all the topics that they have they sound fine like mm -hmm. black lives matter yes of course they do mm -hmm. you yeah. know uh, but yeah it, it's the they way that they do it, emotions. yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they make it to where any defense against any stance you take against it makes you look like a villain just because of the way they've phrased the whole thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, to kind of stay away from the, the, the gay talk, just talking about <laughs> like I grew we're up not in, done uh, with the topic, man. <laughs> uh, okay. we'll go into like the, the, the race thing too, because I, I grew up like in, in South LA, so I grew up mostly around um, what's the right way word to say African Americans or people of color, and uh, uh, I guess Mexicans and Salvadorians or like or Hispanic yeah. people. Yeah. So, and what I never understood, like back in the 90s, is that they pushed so hard, like. Even back then, it seemed to me, or I, it was apparent to me that they were pushing the whole race thing really mm -hmm. hard when in reality, or at least in my reality, because I grew up in South LA, I could see that there was like a lot more racism between the minor, like between us, like black people and like Hispanic mm -hmm. people. And there's like a lot of tension between us. And the one thing, it's like one of those things I also wanted to like make comics for like years ago, like, like the late 90s. I was like, I'm, I should make comics. But then 
it seemed that it was getting better for a while. So you know what? Like, I'm not even gonna like touch the subject because it's getting better. It seemed like it's getting better, but then like we got to, we arrived to what's going on now. Yeah. And the problem was that it's it's social engineering because they make it seem as though anything that you do that's not associated with Hispanic or Black people is something white. So mm-hmm. yeah, intelligence. I mean, we all know that that's just yeah. pure evil. That's what I'm saying. Anything like, that's white. If you deviate <laughs> from from narrative, like if if you do anything intelligent, or if you read a book, or if you participate yeah. in certain mm-hmm. sports, and they'll call you. Yeah. Why are you trying? Like, I remember, like, growing up in South LA, and, and I would get this from both Hispanic and black kids, and they would say, "What's wrong with you trying to be trying to be white? Trying to be white?" Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. "No, I just, I, I, I just like, <laughs> I, I just like this music, or I just like this book, or I just yeah. like this." Yeah, this for show. me, for me, like, I would get like, "You trying to be white when when only I just like, I didn't talk with an accent, you know, what yeah. I mean? from well, yeah. like Hispanic kids, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, I'm supposed uh, to sound like Cheech all the time. That's what I'm saying, shit. like." <laughs> intelligence shouldn't be something like that's exclusive to like somebody that is lighter of lighter complexion like anybody Mm -hmm. can think like think the way that they want to think and it's just like a way like they've so so they've they've been able to socially engineer people engineer Mm -hmm. us into thinking that oh yeah white people are evil (laughs) and i I know it it existed and it still exists but Mm -hmm. it's not the people who are actually racist or the politicians who are pushing the whole critical theory, uh, critical, yeah, critical race, race theory, theory right yeah. now. Because yeah. they're critical over the history of white people, but they're not critical of the history of... I well, think it's just... They, they, or, they're like very selective. And like, mm-hmm. well, okay, well, if you're going to be selective or you're going to be... You're going to criticize the history of, of, of somebody like somebody of lighter complexion also criticize everybody everybody else's fault because yeah everybody well, from every race has had faults historically i think what happened like at one point like in the civil rights movement back in the day it was for a real reason it was needed you know like mm-hmm. yeah. the segregation was just i mean that there's no excuse for that yeah you sure it really wasn't that? That. what happened <laughs> Right now, we're doing it again on purpose. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were able to keep in, you know, they they got progress, but they were able to keep them in, keep minorities and everybody feeling like they had the the left on their side, mm-hmm. when in reality, them they just fed into them staying in this impoverished state and. Now they're saying that the other side is to blame. It's just like they create, and by the more they express it, the more that they say it's an issue, the more it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. Because up until recently, I don't know if I ever met in my in my life a single person that was actually racist. I mean, that you know, I've heard people make jokes or whatever, and and but I've never met someone that would actually treat another person Mm -hmm. poorly just because of their race. Yeah, I remember in high school, uh, someone had a joke like someone's racist or something, and I was just like, why were they be in LA? Like, wouldn't they just be angry all the time? Like, they're surrounded yeah, by Mexicans I, I think, and black people. Yeah. Really, you know, just, I, like, I think. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say that I think what's more prevalent than racism is nepotism, because I don't know if you guys have ever worked for like a, a studio or if you work like for somebody, and where you're like, oh man, I'm. I finally got like the job that I always wanted to get. And then all of a sudden you realize that a lot of the people that are actually working there are working because either they have like an uncle, they have like a dad They're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I didn't go to school, but like my dad, he, uh, he owns the company or so-and-so. And I'm like, Are you freaking kidding me. I went to school. It's <laughs> like, I'm still, I'm still paying my college. I'm still paying for college. And yeah. you got in just because you know, somebody and like, you don't, you didn't even study this. Like I actually, spent all these hours like studying uh because i actually went for um computer animation mm. like for school that was like actually like my my career like of choice like what but year was I, this around uh, this is like back in 2013 12 or something mm. like that ish i can't remember mm-hmm. but uh yeah like i i, I just see i've seen like nepotism like a lot more prevalent like i've seen like well how did you get into uh into a into this a computer animation like oh well i, I just do masonry like the whole, how do you go from 
from that to like what you do now and like oh like and they would be connected they'd have like an uncle or a dad and i'm like yeah it, it would be frustrating i guess like it i mean it's gonna happen but the whole racism thing is just the only the only thing i could see is just more like people just being um jerks or assholes it's, it's something yeah. that people need to grow up like if somebody treats you badly like just do your own thing just mm-hmm. usually people excel or people do the best when they're challenged when, when you're challenged like because I've, I've gone through a lot of adversity where yeah like i've had people be racist against me but it's not nothing like where there's like a uh, like a mob and they tried to lynch me and they're, they're, they're right. to, no it's, it's yeah. not the same thing it's more like well, them being jerks or excluding me and i'm like okay it's not a big deal a yeah. healthy competition helps yeah. improve your skills yes. and your mindset yes. and everything in life and like not everything about life is you know all butterflies and rainbows like there are some really crappy times in life and you have to be able to accept that not everybody's going to be nice to you and also not everybody is trying to be mean to you you yeah. might just be oversensitive about things which i've experienced in my life too like yeah. people weren't always necessarily saying something negative about me or acting a certain way around me um but that was just me being oversensitive yeah. you know like so it's just it's like as you grow up you start learning more about all of that but like if you're if you're raised to think that you know everybody everything is a microaggression and (laughs) you must be pc all of the time and um it just you're not raising somebody who's going to be successful and be able to fend for themselves in life you know like (laughs) yeah that's not the the reality of how the world works (laughs) and the more they push for this stuff too the harder they're making it for someone to rise up. Yeah, they're preaching equality and everything, but mm-hmm. like you're saying, life isn't fair, and there's no situation where everything is always going to be peachy keen and that you're going to get your way. And the more equal it becomes, the less opportunity people have to rise up. And right. it just all feeds into the whole weakening of the nation. I mean, they're trying to the government i think on you know the establishment has been tearing us down for a while and now they've got us to where we're dividing and that's Mm -hmm. they think they're going to be able to come in and you know use that as their power grab but what's going to happen is china russia is going to take advantage i mean every time i hear about some kind of interaction between you know another one of the superpowers i I get nervous i biden's stupidity makes me nervous too because I think he's going to end up doing like overcompensating to try and show that he's against China or something and then make it even worse. I mean, they're just sitting, I just can see him sitting back laughing about all of it. I I was told that Biden was such a great leader though. (laughs) (laughs) He's all talking. He's going to fix all of our problems. Exactly. (laughs) Actually, I like a question for like everybody. And like, uh, I I think what's important too is that, um, Having like a, like a family, I think plays like a, an important role. So like, if, I don't yeah. know if you guys grew up with uh, like a father figure or mother figure, like even if it's not your bi- biological dad or mom, like I think that yeah. helps to a lot yeah. in terms of uh, just discipline and like appreciating life and working <laughs> hard and uh, instilling those uh, values in you. And mm-hmm. uh, a lot of, I think the the, the thing that I, I saw like growing up in South, uh, South LA is that a lot of uh, my friends didn't grow up with, like I grew yeah. up with like both of my parents. But mm-hmm. a lot of the people that I knew um, didn't have like a dad or they just like they they, they, just, they didn't have like a like a family unit to like fall mm-hmm. back on. And that's why mm-hmm. a lot of them fell into like drugs and, and gangs. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember I remember in, in elementary, I think like kids thought it was weird that my both parents were together. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Like, oh, my God, your dad and mom yeah. like lived well, together. That's so weird. I remember. Yeah, I remember what? even in elementary school, too. Like, I was still one of the few people whose parents were still together. Mm-hmm. Um, Same here. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is. That is very interesting. It's. Yeah. I mean, and, and my parents are still married. Mm-hmm. See, uh, for 47 years now. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah, mine are, mine are still together too. Like, you know? I, I I was very fortunate with my family. I mean, aside from the fact that they were all only trying to ever you know protect me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 
but you know limiting my ambitions you know <laughs> to a degree but they were only doing that out of love they didn't realize what they were doing. but I, I gotta say they are responsible for instilling the values that i have that make up the core of who i am yeah. so in that regard i was very lucky yeah. I, I think i think even if it's not you know like i mean parents don't always say the right things or do the right things that's yeah I'm sure. yeah <laughs> i have a long list of things in my mind <laughs> but i mean even with that i i think it did help with some stability you know having at least you knew who was going to be around mm -hmm. and um so both of like my my dad moved several times when he was growing up and my mom moved a few times too when she was growing up during like important parts of her childhood like across the country and she started high school in a completely different part of the u.s like mm -hmm. <laughs> so she didn't know anyone going into high school at all and um she had moved like like twice before that so anyway when when we got into school um they didn't want to move because they wanted us to be in one spot and to yeah. have that stability because they knew how difficult it was to constantly start over in a different location. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I'm very grateful for that because I, I didn't move. I, I lived in the same house for 18 years. Um, it wasn't until I went away to college that I left. Like <laughs> I had never moved, lived anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and we, we traveled a lot, like we went on like family vacations and road trips and stuff. So I saw a lot of areas, but I hadn't actually like lived anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was nice because I, I did at least know those people. Um, my, my parents being around them all the time and then the same group of kids and everything growing up together, mm -hmm. even if I didn't get along with all of them, but I knew all of them. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh for me, I, th I think I kind of started becoming a little bit more of a, someone that kind of, I, I guess, looks into things a little bit more dorky, a little bit more individualist, uh, mm -hmm. maybe through high school. Because um, I, I hung out with like a couple of the punks in high school. Like I'm, my crew of people I hung out with was, I think he was half Guatemalan, half Polish, and he was into Christian punk that's interesting and yeah, yeah it was just a weird crew of people and for me like I, I was starting to get into like weird like you know underground hip-hop and 90s hip-hop and like funk soul like stuff that was not part of the mainstream and I think me and him we kind of clicked because we were I wasn't a punk he wasn't a hip-hop head but we sort of clicked into the because we both had like this like you know it's just lame to be part of you know the the whatever you want to call it, the mainstream establishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder like if that kind of mentality in kids is still going to be, is still prevalent. Cause when I talk to younger kids, like they seem so like they're into the same things. They're, they're not into like weird nichey things. And I, I kind of, I worry that that's going to be gone. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it will, I, but. I definitely well, find the same kind of the same boat as you as far as like um not really following mainstream mm -hmm. culture and stuff growing mm -hmm. up um i was still like more liberal and had a lot of those influences and stuff growing up mm -hmm. but <clears throat> um like i i it was really kind of overnight where i went from listening to like hip-hop and r&b and stuff in middle school to um listening and loving white zombie and <laughs> <laughs> uh, st just straight into to rock head first mm -hmm. but um i mean i i didn't dress any particular way i just wore what i liked so like mm -hmm. one day i looked kind of grunge mm -hmm. and one day was skater and then it was sort of goth looking and then <laughs> you know whatever and you know like so it, it just i never really fell into one category i just kind of did my own thing it, did you go through a goth phase because i was always yeah oh god <laughs> well not not like it was just like the music I or... the way something oh no no i went through really. a grunge phase yeah um, yeah yeah but i had never uh i i mean aside from you know occasionally hear stuff but 
all I really knew was country and gospel music. Uh-huh. And I was in the eighth grade and there was a CD on the ground, picked it up and put it in uh, my disc band at home <laughs> that I had. <laughs> <laughs> it was Nirvana. And nice. yeah, I, oh my gosh, yeah, it changed my life. It was awesome. That's funny. Of course, I did, you know, start suffering in grades and doing other stupid stuff after that but Mm -hmm. you know for you huh (laughs) (laughs) oh that damn rock music i tell you yeah Yeah. (laughs) i I tasted the forbidden fruit (laughs) (laughs) i think what what it is too is um i think people are capable or like are a lot more diverse than they than they think Mm -hmm. in terms like Mm -hmm. especially with with music it's just that uh, what it is is that they're afraid of being made fun of. Yeah. And I almost, yeah. I sort of almost didn't have any shame. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess because yeah, yeah. I, I got made, yeah. made fun of so much, like growing up. So I didn't really <laughs> care. But uh, I was the same way because I would listen to like what people would, I guess, consider like K rock music because I was like from LA. So I used to listen to all that. Yeah. A lot of like um, in, in the independent, like punk music, ska music. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like, I was still listening to, like, Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. So I was like, I don't give a crap fast. And, like, later on, I yeah. even got into, like, Bossa Nova and all the, like, the more cool, like, like, uh, what's it called? The trip hop, like Portis said. And, like, oh, yeah. in the end, like, you just, like, you just, people are capable of, like, any kind of emotion. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it's dumb to limit yourself to, like, just one kind yeah. of music. Well, and I think and- what it is. What it is, people are just afraid of getting made fun of. It's like, oh, you listen to Backstreet Boys, or you listen to Portishead. You, what's, what's what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're talking about you said something about goth and grunge, and then not following in with everybody else. I think too, a lot of you hear a lot about artists, uh, just like with myself. There's a lot of drifting, and I think that it goes like with all aspects of our lives. Like, I mean, we drift from one type of music to another until we find the thing we really love Mm -hmm. then we you know it it, the art process itself i think is just a constant drifting until you find that one thing that grabs you uh, and you have to have to have to get it out and uh, i mean in my style and my way of doing things my approach to everything is just constantly changed and i was when i was in high school i would drift around and not I would always feel left out or, you know, I was very insecure mm-hmm. and I think that's very common with artists. Yeah. yeah, I, I was definitely insecure, <laughs> even though I dressed the way I did or whatever. And it was funny because um, I had a, a very brief boyfriend in high school, mm-hmm. but I remember him, uh, we were friends after we decided that it wasn't going to work out or whatever, but mm-hmm. he was just like, well, you're very intimidating to, to like walk up to. I was like, the hell are you talking about like I'm scared to death of everything like <laughs> but it's just interesting like a perception of what people how people see you mm-hmm. versus like how you feel because like I have always been very like introverted um, yeah but try yeah. to do things to I don't I don't know like it's it's kind of a, it's weird mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if like you're a yeah. shy introverted person but you're maybe dressing in a way that makes you stand yeah out. no that like, uh, very it, it seems to contradict <laughs> itself but it also is very common it's like yeah. you you want to be away anything. from everybody but you yeah. got to have something that gets you some yeah. kind of attention mm-hmm. whether it's no i get that i can see that <laughs> that as i know I, I yeah i went through some weird weird stuff as far as like the way I would dress it there. Yeah, well, we tend to project as, as humans too. So like we may feel a certain way, people see a see us a, a certain way, but on the contrary, like most of the time people don't really crit are criticizing us as, as, as much as we think. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think for the I saw a read a quote somewhere is I can't remember who said it, but it's uh oh okay. Never mind. I can't remember who it was. It... I was thinking thinking along the, the lines of like being judged by somebody or whatever. I, I remember. Oh, thinking, yeah. Um, Nobody caring. This was... mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, sorry. I had a, a boyfriend in college and I remember um, his mom was so 
she was really awful to be honest but (laughs) (laughs) she she like got after him because like the outside of his car was dirty or whatever and she was just like everybody's thinking what did what did their parents teach him like everybody is not thinking like what did this person's mom teach them about washing their car everybody's probably just thinking there's a car on the road and oh it's kind of dirty and they just move on with their lives like (laughs) why would you think everybody's judging you who lives in another state (laughs) but she was one of those that was always like hypersensitive about stuff to you like Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, most of the time, no one is really thinking about you. Like, I mean, in high school, yeah, they pick on you just because that's what happens in high school. But I mean, for the most part, no one cares what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, As long as you're not. And and I mean, like that goes back to what I said earlier. Like, uh, at the end of the day, as long as you're not hurting anyone, I really don't care what you're doing. Like, (laughs) you just live in your life and being yourself being happy like you just i I do do find it i find it very (laughs) interesting that the the process of stuff because i don't know if y'all have ever paid attention to the 250 year civilization cycle like major civilizations have a life cycle it's i think 10 generations and they all follow the same path and we're on that path right now too are you talking about like the monetary system or no like uh, part of those I can't remember the exact order. It's a, uh, a lot of them overlap, but is the guy that wrote it was a British general. His name was Glub. I think it was the late eighty or early eighties that he wrote it. Anyway, it goes about. It talks about that uh, goes for you know, society will go from being oppressed and finding faith, and then fi- through the faith they find courage, and then they rise up, you know, and everything, and then you go through these, but the point i was originally making it's something you should look into but point i was originally making is it's the people that start this stuff they get progress going is always the the creative or whatever yeah that that type of personality but that in that abandoning of regard for caution or you know not doing what everything that might start out being intimidated by everybody will give you the bravery to go off and do something but then something weird happens at some point and then it just turns and the thing that you were going against ends up taking over. And then, so the people that were against what the people going forward were doing at first, but then end up becoming the other side. And it's just, this is back and forth, back and forth. And, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's always driven by creatives. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Like I haven't read that book, but I, I've kind of like sort of, came to the same conclusion about like slide is just kind of like um it's like the pendulum kind of swinging back and forth back and forth where i don't know if this is kind of like the same thing you're, you're saying but like how like one side se- seems to like overwhelm the other side and then like the other one it just yeah. swings back the other way kind of yeah. how politics has normally gone where yeah. You, yeah. you know you've got a democrat in control for however many years and then you have a republican in control for however many years and it's always like it's it's not like you elect another democrat or another republican to follow an eight-year term from one of them usually people are like no we had enough of that one let's go back the other way yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but th- that 250 year cycle is very very interesting i mean because it goes all the way back to egypt i mean that hmm. for three thousand years every major civilization you count rome as two different ones the republic and the empire and but like at the very end of it though you always know first sign that a civilization is in decline is when the celebrities and heroes are no longer uh veterans or whatever they become athletes and stuff like that then the uh complete disregard for sexuality and just like everything going rampant like everything being yeah, okay I, i've heard about abandoning that, uh... of uh, religious views it's he- do you know who, who Douglas? Do you know who Doug, Do you know who Douglas Murray is? Hmm. He's some uh, commentator guy. I've seen him on a couple. Of He's been, he was on Rogan, and uh, he mentioned also like one of the signs of like a, a society or whatever collapsing is like the pattern is like they usually like sexuality wise they start to get really weird. Like if you think of like Greece, like when it fell, 
that's when they were like doing orgies and just yeah. weird shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just bringing that up and kind of think about that. Especially go back to like the whole trans thing. Like and now we got Nickelodeon and exactly like now they're just <laughs> getting weird with it and I, See, the I, thing that yeah. thing that concerns me in the past it's always the final stage has always been where either the uh, uprising and they uh, ended up expanding because that's one of the first phases of a civilization is conquest phase yeah and. But it's almost always resulted in people moving further out from where they were. But there's nowhere left to move now. And it, it, them pushing us into this. It, I don't know, man. It's just all these things. I, I, I think, too, like, have you guys heard of, like, the term intersectionality? It's like a SJW term. Yeah, the, it? yeah. It's like, I don't know if you guys, if I can explain it, but it's like this idea of, like, you have all these oppressed class and, like, these classes and they they're like oppressor sort of like intersects into like this one bad guy so i guess you could say it could be straight white males or something like that and i i think the people that push that i think they're in a weird way like doing the reverse where they're like kind of pushing everyone else that's not part of that kind of mentality into like this into this one cohesive thing so i i think like if more people start speaking up against this shit, like if every single person just said stop with the stupid shit, it would probably end within a week. You know what I mean? Um, that is true. If you had enough people going, this is not right. Yeah. It, <laughs> if if <laughs> like if by Friday everyone just like that kept quiet, just said, "Oh my god, can you just shut take up? A, take a <laughs> take a week off. Can you just shut the fuck up?" And I think like yeah. everything would be just chill again um yeah I, I think this weird intersectionality is having this weird reverse effect and, and people are noticing that they're having a lot more in common mainly through these kind of conversations yeah um uh, i was gonna ask about about my audio is my audio still too low or you're good you're good you're, i'm good <laughs> yeah um, i think i think part of the problem too is uh big tech just because yeah a lot of people are a lot more cautious about like what it is that they, uh, they can say or, or they want to say, mm -hmm. because uh, it used to be that, yeah, people used to like, if somebody said something stupid or perverse or degenerate, like people will usually get called out, but now mm -hmm. people are kind of afraid to call it out just because they, they're afraid of getting banned or getting flagged or whatever it is that they, they do nowadays. But yeah, it's just like, they're overstepping the line and, people are just afraid to speak up. You're like, ah, oh, why am I going to speak up when there's all these like bot accounts or like real accounts? Like if I say something, all these people are going to come after me. I'm going to get like my, my inbox is going to get filled up with like, like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever gotten that before. Like you, you start getting, uh, cause for a while, like I, I got, got, got I kind of got pulled into that where I was uh -huh. like making comments about like all these idiots. <laughs> and, and like sure that like you start getting like people on your page start making comments and, like it's not even about the issue they always attack your your character or they, they say are oh, you dumbass you racist you bigot or the funniest one though is like back in the day like when i still had facebook like a few years ago this one girl like the, the guy it's funny because like it was i kind of got ganged up by like a, a guy i used to work with and then his girlfriend and it was like back in like when we were talking about like the like kids in cages, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> like back when <laughs> Trump was president. Yeah. And it's funny because they sort of like piled up on me and I was trying to be like nice. I was responding to him in a way where, OK, I'm going to be nice. But like, like his, girl, his girlfriend was like, like going off on me. And like the funniest one was like, she started calling me like Jon Snow. I'm like, dude, like I'm not like it's like. <laughs> is that an insult? Or... Is that an insult? Like I'm like, what the, what the cool? hell is that supposed to be? Yeah, and the thing was, was that she was like a Hispanic too. I'm like, like I'm like more Hispanic than you. <laughs> I don't know. It's so, it's so, it's so dumb. It's so dumb because it's just like, um, after one, you, you you start censoring yourself a little bit just because you don't you want to use your energy wisely, mm -hmm. and I think that's part of it too. Yeah, well, it, it there's also a difference in you know censoring yourself and just being polite. Yeah, you yeah. know, like. 
you don't say things that you wouldn't say to someone in person. Don't say things you would be ashamed your mother would hear yeah. and and have decency. Like, I mean, I, I'll I'll respond to people whenever they send me stuff if they say it in a way that doesn't make them seem completely closed minded and looney tunes. Because that you can tell whenever they, they talk by, by their tone, if they're gonna if, it doesn't matter what you say. They're, you're not going to change their mind. They're not going to change your mind. It's just going to be a yelling contest, and that's what they want too. And so I try to not engage with it unless I feel like they have something to say that I might need to hear. But yeah, otherwise, think, um, it's just ridiculous. It, I think uh, along with all that, and it's something that has bothered me for years, um, even before I became conservative, was just being tactful when when you're speaking you know like like you were saying you can just you can be polite you know you don't have to you can still get your point across in a way that where you don't belittle somebody or you make them feel inferior somehow or cut them down personally you know like it's there's there's positive criticism you can give um yeah. And then, you know, like it, it does depend on if they're willing to accept it or not, because you're right. Like there's no point in engaging with some of those people, mm-hmm. but you can, you can tell sometimes uh, when people say stuff online, even though it's just like a few words in a comment or something, it's just like, oh, may, maybe they'd be open to a response or something. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of times they're not depending on what platform you're on. Well, the um, problem too, is the people that might actually, have something to say that that could be persuaded are the kind that are not going to say it just because they don't have the courage to Mm -hmm. because they think everyone else is going to attack them right because and i i can let that stuff roll off my shoulder roll you know but a lot of people can't they they get in those online arguments and they just Mm -hmm. makes them miserable (laughs) Like one thing I, I found um, recently since I started this business and started making the connections and everything that I have, um, when I when I started initially, I didn't have any, I, I didn't, this sounds really like pathetic. I didn't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, when I decided to make this move, like I, I had always had support as long as I was just being my old me. Mm-hmm. Um, with all of my old friends who we all thought the same liberal sort of ideas and everything, you know, mm-hmm. but um, prior to starting all of this, I kind of like looked through it. I was like, there's, there might be somebody in here that would be supportive, but like 99% of the people that I'm connected to are not going to be supportive of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. So it was hard to start because I didn't have anybody following me so I had to try to like follow people and try to comment here and there and occasionally I'd get somebody you know um and then I was able to start entering those contests for the marine rapper which helped um because I started getting some followers that way I think that's how I found you yeah yeah Yeah. um and then through that I made a lot of other really great connections too and and what I wasn't expecting when I started all of this because it was a very very dark tunnel (laughs) I was going down to at the beginning was that I I found this like incredible supportive community of creative people like you all Mm -hmm. um, and just other individuals who have similar thought processes as I do and it's it's a very like um, discussion driven sort of environment Mm-hmm. and everybody's willing to talk and and you know not everybody came from the same place so it's just i wasn't expecting the support that i received i guess is what i'm mm-hmm. saying like i i thought for sure it was just going to be this horrible horrible <laughs> trip <laughs> yeah I, i'm the same it was way. a nice I, relief it was a nice relief <laughs> i've uh, i've gotten way more positive support mm-hmm. than negative which was shocked me yeah. And it's just like you said, it's from unexpected places. I, I mean, the people I expected to, you know, be excited about all this stuff, they don't care at all. Right. 
Yeah. If not flat out offended or just quit talking to me. Yeah. I think what it is too is that a lot of these people that we see uh, advocating all these, uh, uh, how do you call the virtue signaling? All these people like, oh yeah, like I care about like Asian lives. I care about black lives. It's not so much that they really care. It's more that they're so in love with themselves Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. they just enjoy, they don't really take the time to listen to anybody else. It's like more like, okay, I'm doing something nice. And like, everybody loves me. I'm getting all these comments and likes, but then like when you come to like, I guess like more people or that think um, not alike, but like more similar, kind of like us, Mm-hmm. We're people that tend to listen more. I think we, yeah. we, we probably have like more of an open mind to mm-hmm. versus these other people are just like nihilist, like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I love everybody, love me back. It's more like right. they do it's like a, a show just so like everybody can be like, oh, oh, this person is such a great guy or a great girl. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're just you're not even doing it because you care, you're doing it because you're so full of there you go. S H A I T. Yeah. <laughs> you can I, curse. I it's a, okay. I think there are a lot of people yeah. who who do think more along the lines of like yeah. things that we talk about and everything than than mm-hmm. actually want to admit. And they're kind of like stuck in this position where they do feel scared that they're gonna lose everybody that they know. And yeah, yeah. that I mean, that you uh, really only need and have just a couple of people in in your life that you could yeah, really you rely on and lean on you know you don't need you don't need all of you don't need all of facebook to like you right or something, you know? <laughs> yes yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> yeah it's like it's, it's like a it's drug. nice to have that yeah. support but you know like if if they're not going to agree with you and they're going to hate you because of that then mm-hmm. they weren't good enough to be acquainted with you to begin with you know like if you can't respect and love somebody for having a different opinion (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, but i think that there's a lot of people like if they if they just understood that you know we were open to to talking about stuff and accepting you know when you come in with such like anger and hatred mm -hmm. towards somebody like of course you're going to be met with hostility because you know we don't want to be around that (laughs) yeah Mm. nobody wants to be around stuff like that yeah i think with social media they created like this drug for people i I even like Mm -hmm. i'm addicted to a little bit too Uh, i'll admit a little bit just because i I like (laughs) looking like it 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 it, it, uh it sets it up where like you start viewing artwork like you start following certain artists you're like oh wow like this this artist and you find like another artist that's similar so Mm -hmm. you start becoming addicted but like some of these influencers, they also become addicted, but they become addicted with, oh, I want people to follow me. So they'll start compromising. And it's like, okay, I'm going to share like uh, this propaganda of people wearing a mask just because I want like more followers. I want yeah. more people to look at my videos. And it's like they start becoming something else because they need that drug of the likes and the followers. Mm-hmm. And like... It's like it's like it's it's a drug. They're addicted to it. Like I and for me, it's like it's not so much like so much like uh, the amount of people are following you, or the likes. It's the the people. Like I don't have like a big following, but I get like steady. I'm, I'm lucky enough that I get steady enough work mm-hmm. with like my measly with nine hundred <laughs> nine hundred and something followers. That's like kind of like stuck at that number for whatever reason. But it, it's okay because I still get like direct messages from people to do uh to do events and to, to do parties so yeah, i don't like need I, to yeah i don't have a ton of followers either but i have a very supportive community exactly. that follows me and they're mm-hmm. encouraging yeah. and they want to work <clears throat> with me and they keep coming back to work with me because I, we all work well together exactly that's like a yeah. real grassroots uh, following right hey i gotta say i i'm blown away by how positive everybody i mean it, there's been some bad ones but overall it's been overwhelmingly positive Mm -hmm. i got uh a message from several people that just you know had said that my work had helped them think things through a little bit so i and i and doing that poster thing i it just proved uh, where i was giving out free posters for the people that don't know Mm -hmm. it really showed me how many people there are that want to say something want to do something Mm -hmm. but just don't know what to do and the simple act of hey let's post all these up on uh fourth of july was enough to get over a hundred people with my measly fall amount of followers 
over a hundred people wanted a poster to put up to post on Fourth of July, and then I got I think it was like ten new followers of people that just wanted to you know reach out. They liked what I was doing, and so it you there is hope out there, and I think that they make it seem way worse than it really is. And I think there's a lot of people that don't speak because they're afraid. I think, I mean, and I think that that that's definitely by design. Like they don't want you to feel like you have support. They want you to feel like you don't have any friends if you think different. And, mm-hmm. and that's the reason why so many people are scared to actually speak out against the crowd that they've always been involved with is because you suddenly feel very isolated. Like mm-hmm. I, I, went through like when I was starting this um, company too, like before I decided to do it, I knew I wanted to to try to help and make a change, but I didn't really know what to do. And this was just kind of where I started with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And, but before that, it was like, it was, it was difficult because I suddenly realized how alone I was in trying to do something different. You know, I had the support of my husband, of course, um, which has always been there, but you know, I just, I didn't really know where to go and what to do because I started realizing that people that I had known for so many years and who had always been there, they just weren't. <laughs> so it's like, you, you really do feel like you're losing everything. Um, but like I was saying, it's, it's interesting because like you, you do feel like you've lost all of that, but then you feel like you've gained so much once you realize that you're more comfortable with what you're thinking and that there's Mm -hmm. other people there to support you along the way. Well, also too, you gain a certain level of confidence whenever it's your own thinking and not what someone else is telling you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I guess, I guess for another kind of to move on with this, uh, like, did you guys have a moment like that made you start to like, I don't know, like, like Axiom, you went from like left to pretty more concerned, but like, do you remember like when you start to at least like be a little bit more curious, like, was there a specific event or? Yeah. So I, I spent, um, probably until my mid, mid to late twenties, fairly Mm -hmm. liberal. Mm -hmm. Um, I started dating my now husband, um, in 2007 and um we always like i i knew going into the relationship that we were always opposite like i knew he was conservative and i was liberal we we canceled each other out in elections like (laughs) (laughs) um and and that was fine like we got along just fine like if we were to meet in today's climate there's no way we would have even thought about you know like if I was still liberal and like just the way everything is right now like there's no way we would have started dating yeah (laughs) Um, but at that time it was there wasn't all that hostility and stuff with it like we respected each other for having a different opinion and um anyway he I always um admired his intelligence and so he was a big part of what made me start questioning things Mm -hmm. because I I always knew he was smart I always admired him um he like he has a degree in aeronautical science so Mm -hmm. like i I, and he's always been very quick and had a lot of information and uh, one thing i i did like about him where where i just kind of blindly followed stuff originally i just kind of like heard what i heard on the news and you know didn't really look into things so i was just i was one of those people that wasn't looking into it um you just go on your talking points, but that's all you have. You have no information to back anything up. (laughs) Um, But he started pointing things out, just like little things. It wasn't political. It was, um, he had a lot of information about flying planes and how Mm -hmm. a plane worked, different things that happened with him. So there would be like a news story where there was a plane crash, something, some catastrophic failure, something would happen, right? And they would come on with the industry professional on the news and interview them. And he would be like, oh, you know, this happened and then this happened and then this is how this happens. He's like, that's not how that happens at all. Like, <laughs> and so he would explain it and where I wasn't, I knew nothing about how a plane actually functioned. Mm-hmm. I believed him because <laughs> I knew his experience <laughs> with it, you know. 
Um, so I, I just started to start questioning some of the smaller stuff to start mm -hmm. with. Um, but it made me trust his opinion a little bit more with all of that. And then he was also somebody who looked into multiple different news sources. He didn't just follow one news source. Mm -hmm. He would find like, say he found like a headline and be like, I don't know about that. So then he would go compare it um, with like five other news organizations to see yeah. what information he could find that actually was accurate. Um, so I, I always really respected that he did all that extra research to try to find the actual truth and things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, so over the years, I just started to kind of question more stuff and, and have more of those discussions and everything with him. Yeah. Do you um, remember and, like any thing that you like, uh, that he like sort of opened your eyes on, like a particular story that he like debunked for you or something like that or? The plane thing was was definitely the first moment I realized that maybe everything the news was telling me wasn't true. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like <laughs> maybe not all of this is right. Mm -hmm. um, I, another thing that he did for me is when we when we moved in together, um, I was never I I didn't grow up anti gun, but we didn't have them in the house. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything in the house where they were like you know, these are evil, we shouldn't have these. It just wasn't an interest in my family. Yeah. Um, but, you know, school did its job on showing me how dangerous and lethal and scary guns were. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't even like a ton of information. It was just enough to make me scared, you know? Yeah. Um, and then my aunt was shot. Um, so that sort of reinforced guns are scary and evil and kill people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did survive that, by the way. Um, so anyway, uh, when we moved in together, I knew that they were going to be in the house and mm -hmm. I was like, I, I know nothing about them, but I appreciate and respect him. And I know he's intelligent and he's safe with them. Um, I should probably know how to use them. Mm -hmm. So he, like, he took me to the range and he's fortunately very patient and good teacher, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, understanding how they worked and everything also made me understand um, that just more education into things makes mm -hmm. things easier to grasp and not yeah. so scary in life. Like it's not scary if you know what the hell you're doing, <laughs> <laughs> but you remove all of that education and just tell somebody something without backing up and with any information, you know, like mm -hmm. you're, you're going to scare the hell out of people. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just kind of like little stuff over the years. I, I didn't have any sort of like celebrities. And I know a lot of people kind of did mm -hmm. research on their own and watched videos and things. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't my my experience with it. It was yeah. just kind of having that one person that I really trusted to help guide me. Um, and then, of course, you know, fast forward, Trump, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you, would you say you're a conservative before Trump or like? Yes. Oh, okay. I would, yeah, I was. Um, I became more conservative under Trump, though. Mm. Um, I think everyone. I yeah, I think every that. yeah, I think everyone did. He pointed <laughs> out a lot of stuff that, like, I mean, even my husband, he was just like, "I'm more conservative now," just because I didn't realize just how bad it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until everything started happening over the last like five years or six years. Yeah. He really did uh, show how far they're willing to go and how mm -hmm. crazy they are. Mm -hmm. Like he revealed to the country what the establishment really is. Yeah. Well, but wasn't he just lying that whole time? Oh, I'm sorry. Everything's coming true now. <laughs> No more. We're running out of conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> like the I mean, Wuhan, <laughs> the Wuhan yeah, lab yeah, conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and there's still like a big like let's suck Fauci's dick uh, thing going on here in LA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I was driving uh from the mall. I went to uh, the mall for like a I had the there's a wedding I'm going to, um, and on the way back there was like a billboard that said something like like if Fauci was a work a workplace he'd have a two houses by now or some shit like that it was really weird it was like in pink colors it was like you know it was like like you know Hollywood area so 
Yeah. West Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just like, why are they still like, even the idea of like that, that they made him like this celebrity from the first place was strange mm-hmm. to me. But like the fact that they're still like on this, like, like so apologetic for him and shit like that. Like, he's not your uncle. Like, he's just some douche. Yeah. Stuff up. It's, 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 it's strange. Like, I, I mean, for me, like what made me sort of look more into things was I started noticing I think I think with within the time like Obama um, that people were like looking at politicians like celebrities and I just was really weirded out by that like like as if they were like a boyfriend like they were like Obama was their boyfriend and they're like super apologetic and you know, I don't know what he does, but like, like, I mean, just look at him. He's like, you know, he's just awesome. You know, and I was just like, he's a politician. He's just, he's no one special. And and, and that's what, I, maybe it's from my, like my punk rock days that like I was so like anti-establishment. But from then, like, that's what made me started looking more into things and not looking at politicians or even political pundits as like these like, you know, like they're Jay-Z or something like they're just people they might be wrong they might be right or they might be nefarious it's it, it sort of like you know remove the curtain uh for me like I just saw them as just regular people and I think that for me that was like the thing that sort of changed me as far as like looking in more into like politician wise things like cultural politics is stuff that I've always kind of looked into because I just think it's interesting, but as far as like politician wise, like that was the thing that sort of uh, changed me. Um, I think what you just said about you know they became you start seeing them as real people. I think that's a big part of all of this that most people that that keeps people quiet, that keeps them from doing anything. That mm-hmm. they view anyone that's on screen as almost a fictional character. Mm-hmm. like that person or anybody that does something that's in a position of power that they would never dream of trying to reach for that there's something special about that person but there's yeah. not i mean there there are plenty flawed people i mean it's just there that happens to be where they chose to go in their profession mm-hmm. there are plenty of people that could do that but it's just all in conditioning because I was the same way. I, I didn't think that it was real, that it, it, they were, you know, I always, that's why I never even really tried to do anything. I mean, I was on disability most of my life, you know, in and out of hospitals, couldn't stand up without passing out from 17 to 25. Wow. And then I had a seizure. Well, after that, I got married. They told me I was going to have to be in a wheelchair and and, because it would be impossible to do what what was required to get past it because you have to exercise a ton and but you'd pass out in doing that so they didn't think anybody could do it and i was like well i'm not going to be in a wheelchair so i started doing p90x and got better and then i got married and had a kid and then got divorced in custody of the kid within a year (laughs) (laughs) and then uh after that i broke my i had a seizure that was so violent it broke my back broke this arm my right arm in four pieces i got a metal plate there i had uh this one fractured the humeral head that healed wrong and uh so i have i've had two shoulder replacements on that broken back neck that i can't really if i look down for any amount of time my face goes numb and everything but all of that stuff like I got to the point where even trying for a normal life, even though I I never really felt like I fit in or anything Mm -hmm. like that, it took all that happening to where I normal was no longer an option. And I was so miserable that doing anything beyond what I really, really wanted to do or something that I saw as a a achievable or not achievable, a uh, amazing out there goal that it wasn't worth the fight and so that was kind of what led me to start looking at things differently was just because i started like what can i do to get i was anger drove me after the last shoulder replacement 
because I had other things happen at the same time. And it's just, I, I hated life. I hated how it was. I, I knew that there had to be more. And then I started looking at it and started studying the people. And then when you do that to study what it takes to achieve that, you also start seeing their, their personalities, what they, their views are. Mm-hmm. And there's so many different ideas out there. It, it, it branches out and opens up into so much. Mm-hmm. Once you unlock that one part of your brain where you think you're limited, then yeah. it changes everything. It changes how you look at the world. It changes how who you believe whenever they uh, give you parenting advice, meaning <laughs> the government. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's, when, I, when I think of, like, you know, following any kind of politics, like, I sort of treat it, like, in the same way I, I treat, like, collecting music in a weird way. Like, let's say, like, if I only listen to Nirvana and, like, I just equated music with just nirvana like that'd be like the only band i listen to the only music i listen to i only listen to fucking you know nirvana cover bands like i'm not really giving myself a chance to like broaden my scope yeah you don't grow at all i I sort of treat like this kind of shit the same way like i I listen to Mm -hmm. a good like a different philosophies like i've known about like marxism and stuff like that for years you know what i mean i I don't think it's a good idea, (laughs) but, you know, I even looked into like, you know, like when the alt-right was a thing, uh, I was just curious as to know what the hell it was about. So I I searched for what like they believed in and I found like that they actually don't differ that much from like the far left, uh, which is hilarious in a weird and creepy way. Um, But I just never realized maybe until like maybe this last year that like people don't do that. Like they're just very narrow minded uh, with their beliefs and which to me is like kind of heartbreaking because I I see that as people sort of selling themselves short. Like, you know, like you have the capacity to, you know, broaden your perspective and just generally be more interesting. Like, Don't you want to be more interesting or do you want to just like be a mouthpiece for you know like, like Trevor Noah or some shit like that? Yeah, uh, I think I think part of it is that people live in their head so much that um, the media does such a good job at selling and doing like a sales pitch of all these people that they eventually ide- um, idealize or idolize. Mm-hmm. Like a, for example, like uh, politicians, for example, or specifically Obama, like how he was propped up by the, the media out there. Mm-hmm. And nobody really questioned his his uh, his yeah. character because they weren't like looking so much like the things that he was doing. It was more like people, the media propped him up, or, like set him up like a, they, they sort of like romanticized like his character. So he became what everybody wanted him to become or yeah. wanted them to. So like in their head, like, oh, this is a perfect man or the perfect president. So whatever it is that they envision in their own sort of fantasy, that's what they thought Obama was. And somebody, yeah. and I think that th- that's the difference between us is that we can see past that and we can say, okay, well, he, he seems like, he seems like a, a cool guy. Like he, he drinks beer, he plays basketball. Mm-hmm. And but, I mean, you could tell, I mean, I, I could tell he was pandering. Yeah. And so when you start to closely, like a, uh, just, I think what's important, like uh, Axiom brought up, and this is one of the things that I was thinking about earlier too, is that we don't take the time to really educate ourselves because the way that the media is um, delivers the, the news to us, it's always, it's never informing us really of anything. It's more yeah. trying to get us to react a certain way. Like it's, it's pulling at our emotions. Mm-hmm. So if you look at a lot of these new, a lot of these terrible things that happen on the news, you never get any backstory. You never get any information. Somebody yeah. that, like me that um, enjoys to read like fiction from now, uh, every now and then, like I want to know like the information. Like how did that this happen? Like yeah. how, what happened? Like what's the background uh, of this guy that was killed by the cops or what? I mean, but you, you never get that information. Mm-hmm. But if you actually take the time to like actually look into the information, like oh wow, like this is. Like, this is a this is, there's a lot more to this yeah. than <laughs> that what they actually present it. So it's just like taking the time to educate yourself just a little bit more than what it is that they're giving you. 
And I think I've always been that way for, I mean, ever since I can remember, I, I've never really wanted to uh, associate myself either with Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I think they set it up in a way to demoralize people because as a Republican, like most, most of my life, I saw like, okay, Republican, like the difference between Republicans and Democrats, like, okay, the, the, the weakness in the Republican is that they tend to be war hungry. And yeah. that's like something that, that put me off. And then the thing with Democrats is that it's like the welfare state is like, well, neither one of these are good. So it's like, it kind of sort of demoralized for like a long time. I, I really didn't care about politics. Yeah. I think what, what matters is always asking those questions and using your first amendment and be able to, and that's why it's always important to be able to speculate the freedom of speculation. That's something that they're really trying to take away. Yeah. You should be able to speculate, even I mean, you can call it a conspiracy theory, whatever. But um, a lot of the things that a lot of these people were talking or, or a lot of these conspiracy theories have been talking about like for 10 years or 20 years, like a lot of these things are coming, uh, yeah. I mean, true. coming true, They're coming true. So, yeah. and the problem with it too, is that a lot, because um, I kind of go back and forth between conspiracy theory back and forth. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll stop for a little bit in, into looking into it just because it's one of those things that eventually you get to a point where they start muddying the um the the truth and mm -hmm. um so you're like oh, okay this is too outlandish like i don't i don't believe this it just they're, they're trying to muddy it to disillusion people again but yeah. i mean well it, that's why. It's, it's like the world economic forum you're talking about the conspiracies and stuff yeah that is basically is from all i from what i can tell it's just another name for the Illuminati. If I mean, I don't think that they're doing all the things, you know, the crazy religious. They might be. I don't know. But, I mean, it's just all the things that they used to say was crazy conspiracy. They are just flat out saying in the open now with through the World Economic Forum. I mean, it's unreal how much that has shifted. Yeah, like um, same thing with uh, the Council of uh, Foreign Relations. Like all the people that are part of that are people are they're globalists. Like a lot of the uh, like, for example, Joe Biden's part of uh, the CFR. A lot of both Republicans and Democrats are part of that. And uh, the one guy that I found out like a while back that I wanted to bring up was Ted Turner. Ted Turner is part of the Council of Foreign Relations, and to give you an example of like the illusion that we live in is like. Like, because in the 90s, I was like a big fan of the, the Braves. And it seems like uh, I'm not going anywhere with this, but a lot of the things that we believe is because of the influence that we have in pop culture. Yeah. So he was, so baseball, I mean, it turns out a lot of the things that you see on, on TV are, are not really real. I mean, you've all, you've heard this all your lives, but um, Ted Turner, along with owning the Braves back in the 90s, and I used to be a big uh, Braves fan back in the 90s. He also owned CNN. So a lot of the stuff that you see is not really real. And then he's also part of the Council of Foreign Relations. And then go, taking it back to the whole globalism um, agenda, he was also uh, uh, responsible for creating Captain Planet and the Planet Series, mm -hmm. which is one of the earliest attempts in pushing uh, global warming, which we all know it's uh, pseudoscience. <laughs> if you can really look into it like we don't have like like a whole episode for that too but if you guys really uh, take the time and... yeah the global warming thing is very interesting I, I follow this one guy that he talks about i think is suspicious observers or something like that he talks about a galactic uh cycle for every twelve thousand years okay. and it causes the magnetic shift in the poles which creates all of these effects that they say is being caused by global warming. The I, I saw that the fraction, the amount of impact that humans have, it was either 0.4% or 4%. I want to say 0.4 just because it makes the point better. But, but like, I mean, it, we wouldn't, what we're doing, our impact isn't a fart in the wind. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's on a glow or a galactic scale that it's not something that you can stop by stopping fossil fuels or any of this other stuff that they're trying to use as a way to push for more control. Cause that's all it is. The more that 
we move away from fossil fuels, the more we move away from all, all the conventional methods of things, the more control they have. I mean, they've had since computers have become a household thing back in the, was the mid eighties, how much of that time have they been able to condition us a whole generation really in, into just, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well they, they want to make us dependent off of the government like they're they're like magicians yeah. because uh like I've, I've i've brought this up before like in several like other episodes before but like it's something that you have to repeat like the mockingbird media is that the government has nothing to offer us like they don't we're the ones creating the the, the value to everything yeah. like all these fossil fuels all this stuff like we need to be able to continue producing things here in the united states once we stop doing that, if we stop producing anything over here, and that's what Trump was really good at, at accomplishing. He was able to bring back steel jobs back to the United States. He was able to bring more production to the United States because that's what brings value. That's what, what brought up the, the GDP. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to make us dependent off of the government. And that's why they're trying to create these like green new jobs where like we're reliant on yeah. on them and eventually like they're going to set the price they're going to be okay we're going to give you a job but we're going to pay you like what 10 15 dollars an hour but um the by then like the market is going to be so inflated that it's going to take like 500 dollars just for like a loaf of bread and uh, th that's yeah. why i think it's really really important that a network of small businesses the nationwide is put in place because Yes. Exactly. I mean, they they control if they can shut down a state or whatever. I mean, it's not something they should. That's not a power they should have. And if everybody banded together, I mean, there's enough small businesses in this country that mm -hmm. I feel like could sustain the country if they banded together and stopped following whatever it is that's that they're to told to do. Yeah, and then that's why they're trying to like buy up um, all the land. Like Bill Gates was like trying to buy up like yeah. all the farmland. Like what we need to do is like somehow like preserve that, like almost <laughs> almost like separate from the government. But uh, <laughs> we need to be able to like be independent from them because yeah, we're right now we're playing with uh, their their monopoly money. It's not the the money that we're using right now. We're forced to use, but. It's not even backed up by gold. We're using yeah. like fiat money. It's not. It's not backed up by anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh. Uh, how much time do we have? I don't know. I'm getting tired though. I think we can. We can probably like wrap it up. Wrap I think. It up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we could probably continue this kind of conversation uh, at another time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I kind of take it like a different like angle, eh, but eh, it's okay. Yeah, it, it, it is what hey, it is. That's as long as it's a natural conversation, that's, I think, for the best. Uh, I guess, I mean, where would we go? I guess anybody want to, I guess, add any, like, uh, closing thoughts or anything like that? Uh, everybody check out reunited-states.com and, uh, you know, get on board with changing the website. That'll be done hopefully within the next day or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, wanting to put every all the artists that participate in it with links to their sites and an artist gallery for people to where we can. Uh, and I want to start after I do this thing on July fourth. I want to start having people, uh, street artists or whatever, whatever a. Uh, musician that supports you know like a good musician like marine rapper or Topher or any of them uh come around they promote them by putting up political artwork just with information about the show or whatever that should line up the message of it should line up so it doesn't have to cater straight to them if it's political in any way mm -hmm. and then hopefully the artists will work with small businesses and then the small businesses will network together and it'll just be this you know, cost-free promotion machine that everybody benefits from. So that's what, the last thing I got to say. Just everybody check that out. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, we'll probably continue this 
you know, the subject is just overall just like how we came to be who we are. Uh, episode, uh, discussion uh, in the next episode, maybe hopefully Tara will be with us. Um, uh, I don't know, if, uh, benevolent or action. You guys, you guys have anything uh, that you guys got um, going on, working on, or anything like that? Want to promote? Uh, I, well, I, I guess once again, I can't really talk about other things that I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a lot of side projects kind of behind the scenes in, in production and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was going to say like to the nature of the, the show and everything about um, kind of changing opinions and, and everything in life. Like, I think it's anybody who's wanting to talk to people who are more conservative because they feel that way too, and are maybe kind of scared to, to break out of the position yeah. that they're in where they feel like they're going to lose a lot of people that they're connected to. Um, just know that there's a, a very large supportive community on the other side <laughs> yeah you, could call, yeah, it, you yeah. could call it the dark side if you want but <laughs> <laughs> um, you know like there's there's a lot of people here that want people to understand what's going on and to help people and we're all very supportive and very open to to people's opinions if you, if you want to have a respectful conversation about stuff so mm -hmm. I, think, I think don't be scared to make the move yeah. Don't feel don't yeah. feel like you're alone because you're not alone. Yeah. It's okay to be curious. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. That is what they're <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you want to go ahead? Oh, I was gonna say, uh, for anybody because I think there's like a lot more people sort of like in between. You don't have to like really identify as a Republican or Democrat or Trump supporter. Um, to come join us or like take a look or listen to what we have to say um, just just know that we're a lot more alike than than we think it's just that um, what it is what is it that I was going to say is that a lot of the things that I say from the liberal standpoint a lot of the things that we hear from Oprah and from Obama and it's not so much that I don't agree with them. It's just that it's not really what they really mean. Or it's, it's, it's something that, uh, like, for example, like if, if you listen to any speech that Oprah gives, it's always like, oh, the sky is blue. The ra I'm, uh, uh, racism shouldn't exist. Uh, we should just save the earth. All things that we agree with, like conservatives yeah. and liberal libertarians agree with. It's just that you need to take the time to, to like take a look at it a little bit closer because it's not what they really mean. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a globalist agenda that if it's not a conspiracy, anybody can say like if I want to say this and that. I, I obviously, I I don't I never want to see any racism. I wish we can eradicate that from the earth, but there's always going to be like some asshole out there saying mm -hmm. stupid things. So don't fall for these because the way i see them all these sell, i see them as salespeople. all these politicians saying yeah. all these like empty promises of where they, they're going to get rid of racism they're going to save the earth they're going to save the earth from global warming really think about it like obviously yeah. we, we we care too we just have a different way of of looking at at, at things it's, it's not that mm -hmm. we, we 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 don't agree with all those things it's that uh, just, just take the time. We, 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 are willing to listen. The reason yeah. why we're here is because we want to like listen. We want yeah. to like continue to uh, learn from each other. And uh, last thing I'll say: make sure you guys check out Luke. Luke's uh, project is really cool, and uh, I hope hey. uh, a lot more artists jump on it and like we continue to develop as as a group. And know that all of us are introverted and we don't, I, especially me, I don't, I don't really, I'm not used to like joining groups or like trying to be part of like anything. It's just more that mm -hmm. um, right now it's really crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much trying to be part of something is more just opening up and like learning from each other. It's, it's important mm -hmm. to like, to, 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 to listen to each other. Yeah. And um, yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> it's for my, it. my, my final thought is pretty quick pretty quick as uh, i think it's we come to a point where like left and right probably doesn't mean anything nowadays and i i think 
people are relying too much on like labels nowadays as far as like the Republican, whatever the fuck. I, I just know that people most likely want the same things. It's just their, I guess their path to how they come to like their end goal as, as like how they think about it and why they think about it. it they come from a good, you know, from good intentions. Um, just, you know, hear them out one day you know, challenge yourself, challenge them. You only, you only gain, you only gain from that. You won't lose anything. So ask I questions. Get, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, watch plenty of Captain Planet, I guess, too. He's, He's our, our hero. hero. <laughs> Captain Planet. <laughs> Take pollution down to zero. Yep. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll uh, see you guys another time. Uh, I'm right. Senor Filth, and this is the Critical Introvert Show. Thank you.